We move ahead to construction technological acquisition in disaster preparedness, enhancing disaster response to data technology. This is next in the theme. It is a theme that definitely includes the government's digital India mission with an imperative on bringing the digital revolution and disaster preparedness to remote areas. The moderator of the session is Reverend General Shahidata Hussain who is highly decorated with PVSM, UISM, AVSM, SM, BSM. And presently he is member NDMA. I would like to briefly introduce Sir. He has 40 years of illustrious career in Army. From Sri Lanka to Siachen Glacier, from Northeast to Jammu and Kashmir and in UN operations from Mozambique to Rwanda, he has largely seen in crucial appointments. He has served seven tours in JNK, decorated with all of them, and knows the JNK conflict comprehensively. He commanded the India's Indian Army's Srinagar base 15. and King's College London and the Asia Pacific Center for Security Studies Hawaii. He has been at the forefront of encouraging the adoption of US initiated scholar warriors concept in the Indian Army. On 13th July 2018, the President of India appointed Lieutenant General Hassan as Chancellor of Central University of Kashmir. Further on uh, 20th February 2020, he was appointed as member of NDM. General Hussain has been had a decoration decoration awarded by, awarded by President of, in of India. He superannuated from Indian Army in July 2013 after 40 years of active service. Now I request General Hussain to take over the session as moderator. Thank you very much for that. Very, very kind of you. DG Sub, DG NDRF, the hierarchy of the NDRF, members of the audience here, very, very senior, all very, very senior functionaries. <coughs> My pleasure and honor <coughs> to be invited to chair this particular session. First of all, of course, we are aware that this is an event linked to the NPDRR, which is due to be held on the 10th and 11th of March, one of the very, very important calendar events for disaster management in India. The event which will go forward in uh, uh, linking people, the disaster management community, uh, carrying out a tremendous amount of knowledge sharing, which is what is the thing in vogue these days. So this is a very relevant event that we are attending today, and particularly the fact that uh, the Director General NDRF has chosen to, to bring in the aspect of technology here. because. Everything is technology as far as disaster management today is concerned. I can, I can relate to this fact that uh, uh, as it was just being read out from my bio data, I have mostly served only in turbulent areas in the, around the country or in the world. And where, whichever turbulent area, wherever there is, a, everything is an upheaval, everything has been turned upside down, the first thing you look for is information. Without information, how can you, st how can you even commence your process of managing that situation? And what is information? It's all from data, right? It's from data. And today's world has the ability to bring that data forward, analyze it very deeply, and split into two parts. One is the whole aspect of informatics, information which is there available to be presented, to be made use of, and then the information communication. That's the data communication, which brings in the whole realm of social media, satellite imagery, etc. So without data, we are not going anywhere today. I mean, if you just cast your mind back three years ago, this is the, exactly the time in February 2020, we were all floundering around with the onset of coronavirus. And when it came to availability of data, we had, I mean, we were not as professional as 
the necessity was at that particular time. Today, of course, things have developed much beyond the aspect of information about uh, hospitals, about oxygen cylinders, and all kinds of things which are required at that time to actually bring in the aspect of a response. The NDRF has to respond to all kinds of situations around the world. I can imagine the NDRF today sitting in Turkey. Uh, the kind of information they must be seeking, the kind of data they must be seeking all the time, the kind of communications that they have established by different means today, how much of a difference it is making to them. So the long and short of it is that data is in our life today, and we, we can't wish it away. To discuss this whole issue, enhancing disaster response through data technology. We have a, a very eminent set of uh, scientists with us, uh, three of them with us, and uh, Dr. Durga Rao from the National Remote Sensing Center. We have Dr. Vinay Thakur, who's come in from the Bhaskar Charya National Institute for Space Applications and Geoinformatics. And we've got Sri Manoj Rajan from the Karnataka State Disaster Management Authority, Commissioner there, an outstanding uh, disaster manager by himself. So uh, I think about 15 minutes to each of our speakers and leaving us with a fair amount of time still to be able to bring in a few questions and answers. So uh, may I first request Dr. Durga Rao from the um, NRSC, but uh, while he's taking his place, let me just mention that he's a PhD on spatial decision support systems for water resource management and um, MTech in water resources engineering from the IIT Kharagpur. He is a group director at the moment to the Disaster Management Support Group, NRSC, in Hyderabad. He is responsible for space-based disaster management support activities in the country, mainly on hydrological disasters in all three phases of the disasters. Execute, he has executed various national level operational and R&D projects in the field of disaster risk reduction. I know for sure I can vouch for his practical capability because he was a member of my uh, group which investigated the whole uh, Chamoli disaster and what an outstanding job he did. Over to you, Dr. Thank you very much, sir. I'll warn you at about 13, 14 minutes, right, so that we don't overshoot. Thank you very much, sir, uh, respected chair and uh, other dignitaries. Uh, good afternoon to everyone. <coughs> Geospatial technologies uh, plays a, it is a main platform for a dissemination of space-based products, its uh, generation of the products, analysis, and uh, dissemination in addressing all natural disasters in all phases of the disaster. So I would like to address how the space technology is used in the country uh, addressing all natural disasters like floods, cyclones, forest fires, landslides, earthquakes, etc. in all phases. <coughs> now, coming to the geographical information system, what is its role uh, in the disaster management? So, we cannot uh, uh, separate uh, GIS and uh, space technology. So, uh, whatever space-based products we generate, so if the amalgamation of the geospatial technologies only, uh, we prepare we prepare the database, we prepare the special database, we do the modeling, we do the analysis, and uh, um, maybe some information systems in the form of information system or in the form of decision support system, whatever it may be. And we provide the information to the users, particularly for the field operations during relief rescue operations in disaster risk management in the country. So. You know that India is one of the worst uh, disaster affected countries in the world. You name any disaster, it is there. Maybe uh, volcanoes may not be there, but it is the worst affected country uh, countries in the world. Uh, and uh, the country is also very big, uh, particularly uh, floods, and, uh, floods and cyclones are the major disasters in the country, so I will give more emphasis compared to other disasters. So many times we will have uh, floods in five, six uh, states at a time. So we have to address all the disasters. At the, uh, during floods, uh, simultaneously we'll have um, landslides also, so we have to address all those things. So what is the uh, ISRO's, uh, particularly DMS program, Disaster Management Support Program, the main vision is to provide a space-based information during all phases of all natural disasters, preparedness, response, and mitigation phases, and the reconstruction phases for disaster recovery in the country. Now, floods and cyclones, 
we we do near real time uh, flood map monitoring and mapping using multi mission satellite data uh, we prepared flood hazard atlas of complete country almost uh, all at state level and we do we have developed a special flood early warning systems for the godavari and uh, uh, tapi rivers which will be the benchmark uh, models for other rivers in the country under natural hydrology projects and uh, we have forest fire alert system uh, with uh, uh, 30 to 60 minutes turnaround time we disseminate the forest fire alerts to the all state uh, uh, forest fire officers through fsi and the landslide and earthquake uh, we do the landslide damage assessment the landslide uh, inventory landslide early warning and rnd base we are doing and another thing is major important thing is national uh, geo portal uh, national database for emergency management so i will give more emphasis on that because of the, my the topic is geospatial technologies and another thing is we have international uh, collaborations with uh, uh, through international charter and central asia because uh, whenever there is a disaster in the country, we activate internet charter so that we get uh, multi-mission satellite data from different countries. So using all data sets, we cover complete uh, disasters in the country. And uh, apart from that, we do the capacity building, etc. And all products, whatever we do, prepare, we, we provide to the ministry in real time, and to the MHA, NDMA, SDMA, DRF, and uh, MEA, FSA, GSA, etc. for relief and rescue operations and damage assessment in the country. So to cover all such natural disasters across the country, we need a strong space assets, space segment, so that all disasters covered both in space and time. So we use, recently we have we launched RSAT 1A, so this year we have used extensively in our flood and cyclone monitoring and mapping, which is a micro satellite data. And uh, apart from the, apart from other uh, remote sensing satellite data sets, we use uh, free data sets, and we procure uh, remote uh, data set data, and we use uh, satellite data from other space missions also during emergencies. We have aerial platforms. In case of major disasters, we fly and acquire the data. We have in situ observations like uh, AWS stations uh, um, maintained by MOSDEC. And coming to the response phase. Uh, um, particularly floods and cyclones, what we do when there is a flood. Uh, so immediately we acquire the uh, satellite data, whichever is available uh, um, um, nearer to the immediately. So then we analyze it and we integrate with the spatial data and uh, we probably assess the damage, uh, how much uh, area is affected in each district and uh, uh, we pro pro provide maps and reports and disseminate to the users within, within three to four hours turnaround time after acquiring the uh, satellite data and similarly during cyclones but in cyclones the damage due to the wind will be more so we need high resolution optical satellite data maybe 0.5 meter resolution optical satellite data. we acquire it the damage to the info, urban infrastructure whatever it may be we analyze and we provide to the user organizations you can see one uh, and this is the um, last year 2022 floods in um, Godavari river um, um, covered by EYS4, our Indian remote sensing satellite data only. And you can see optical uh, um, Carto satellite data, which covered the um, Tapavun project during last year, uh, disaster, major disaster. And uh, we, we uh, sometimes uh, um, floods are prolonged, we have prolonged floods, so, so we want to know the duration of the flooding, flood progression and decision. So we take frequent, uh, temporal frequent uh, data, frequency data, and we analyze it, how the flood is propagating and uh, receding in that particular stage. And uh, here you can see the complete synoptic view of the floods mapped by National Remote Sensing Center, ISRO, during the last four years. So uh, if you look at, uh, particularly last two years, uh, um, India has experienced major floods in five, 15 states, okay? And in 2019, 14 states. So floods are uh, spreading in different countries. Some states earlier, like Kerala, it was very rarely used to be flooded. Now it is frequently getting floods, even Karnataka, Maharashtra also. So whatever may be the reasons, floods are increasing and spreading to different places. And some states like Assam, Bihar, <coughs> UP, they're experiencing very prolonged floods, two to three months floods. So we have to monitor continuously from the beginning to the ending so that we can assess the damage due to the flooding. And this is the, uh, our high resolution satellite, Indian remote sensing satellite data only during 
Godavari uh, Flex um, Palavaram project, how the, um, you can see uh, the, uh, prior to the flood, the Palavaram project, a lot of uh, uh, infrastructure was there, construction was, is going on, and the complete area was got affected due to the flood. And this is the one uh, uh, members have has mentioned. So we have done extensive study, study during Uttarakhand uh, uh, flash floods, the moment and then the 7th February. The immediately on 8th February itself, we got, uh, we activated international charter, we got a so lot of satellite data, we analyzed uh, what was the precondition, what is the post condition from the cause to the end. So you can see here of uh, the big massive rock slide, which is equivalent to uh, about 40 football stadium size uh, due to its fall. Uh, it created a lot of kinetic energy. As a result, it converted heat energy and uh, snow and uh, gl uh, glaciated material got melted and created a flash flood. And uh, we wanted from the beginning to end, as a result, uh, there was a lake formed in Rishiganga River. That, all, uh, that lake also we wanted and we have done some simulations and provided to the NDME. And coming to the hazard assessment, uh, uh, having the uh, historic, uh, having the advantage of historic satellite data for more than 20 years, Okay, we prepared flood hazard atlas for major six states, uh, which is uh, like UP, Assam, Bihar, Andhra Pradesh, West Bengal, uh, such states. And for other 11 states, we, pre we prepared uh, cumulative aggregated maps using 20 years data. So this, uh, this map is very important information, um, particularly in planning the developmental activities in the flood hazard zones. So you can see here the uh, flood hazard uh, uh, of uh, Odisha state, uh, released by uh, Honorable Chief Minister of Odisha. Um, West Bengal, Andhra Pradesh, released by, um, recently released by um, Minister of State of Union Home Ministry. And uh, UP Atlas was released a few months back by Honorable Chief Minister of uh, um, Uttar Pradesh. And coming to the early warning, this is very important, to particularly in, uh, in response phase, uh, immediately after the event, we can provide, we can acquire the satellite data and we can provide the information. But uh, the users wants uh, advanced information so that it will be very useful for relief and rescue operations and for saving the property and the lives. Okay, we developed flood forecast models, spatial flood forecast models for the Godavari and Tapi under National Energy Project. So it gives the flood information two days in advance to the users so that. Uh, it's a, um, uh, so um, you, um, what we do generally, the models are developed. We are running the model with the simply with the IMD real-time rainfall data. Okay, after models calibration and validation. So then, whatever the flood, dis flood discharges are computed, we are disseminating to the concerned state disaster management organizations, but in during the floods particularly. And uh, last year, um, continuously there were floods in Godavari, 20, 21, 22. So all the three years we provided. Uh, information to the states. Then this is the spatial flood modeling particularly. And this is the new dimension uh, in uh, um, flood early warning. So uh, satellite data, it can provide uh, uh, information after the event. But I want to know what, what areas are likely to be inundated, going to be inundated. So using high resolution digital terrain model, ALTM, TM, 0.25 meter height accuracy, we have done simulation. The river complete um, flood plain of the Godavari, 400 kilometer stretch. <coughs> is modeled. Then uh, this information, here you will get, uh, in satellite information you will get only area only. Here you will get depth of flooding and velocity of flooding also, which are very important parameters in risk modeling. You can see the right side image, how, what, how many villages got affected by the flood and to what extent the in, uh, damage is created, that information you get. Now we are providing a national level runoff products also. This is very useful for the NDRF officials particularly. Uh, during monsoon you can see where very high, heavy rainfall is witnessed in India, okay. So, uh, so we are comp we are running the models in the background, so it will compute the runoff. If the runoff is more than 100 millimeters, that means there is threat of flood in that particular area, okay. So, if the if the same area is uh, uh, experiencing more than 100 mm continuously for two days, three days, means we have to pay more attention. So, this type of information also being pro provided through our. This is the landslide. Okay, when there is a landslide, we're using high resolution data, we do the damage assessment, and we have the landslide hazard inventory, landslide hazard donation, everything is there, and we are working on landslide uh, early warning also. And uh, this is a landslide early warning, particularly in specific routes in, in North India and Northeast India. 
and earthquake, particularly earthquake, uh, we cannot predict in advance. Um, the technology has not developed to that extent. But we do the damage assessment, and we can monitor the uh, uh, rehabilitation, how it is taking place, how the uh, um, restoration works are pro progressing. That type of things we can monitor using high resolution uh, satellite data. And forest fires. Uh, so we monitor all forest fires and the snowball burning on the earth. Okay, using uh, thermal uh, remote sensing data. Um, daily, uh, at uh, um, almost four products we disseminate in a day with a turnaround time of 30 to uh, 60 minutes. So and, two minutes more. Sir, uh, coming to the main national database for emergency management, which is a unique uh, geo portal in India, which uh, addresses, uh, which disseminates uh, all uh, disaster specific products uh, through this portal with the amalgamation of large scale geospatial databases and decision support tools. So it is developed in multilingual support uh, and uh, uh, um, we are going to launch the new version during our 27-28 conference in Hyderabad, uh, latest version and we are going to launch mobile apps also. Okay. So this addresses, uh, this, uh, uh, apart from the space based information dissemination, we disseminate uh, services from the forecasting organizations also like IMD Nowcast data, IMD weather data, CWC water level data, CWC forecast data, uh, everything. Okay, simply NRSC, uh, ndm.nrsc.gov data. So um, our aim is in view of the forthcoming in ICR year, we are, we are developing this portal so that this portal will address the all natural disasters in the country in all phases. You can see that you have large scale geospatial database at uh, 2000 scale, 50,000 scale, and 10,000 scale. Okay, and you can see the ICR framework which is going to come in at MHA uh, in Delhi. We are providing technical support to the IC area. So, this NDM will act as a um, disaster recovery site for the IC area in future. And uh, in, in view of the um, specific two three slides, sir, particularly for uh, NDRF. So we, uh, we, as I mentioned, we developed a separate portal for NDRF on request from uh, NDRF, DG NDRF. So this portal is, uh, it is complete uh, um, like a geospatial uh, tool for them, okay. So for example, if there is any disasters, so first incident reporting you have to do. Once incident report is created, the dot you can see here, dot incident report, then um, um, report is created. Then somebody has to approve the, uh, the report, okay? Once the report is approved, so it, it gives the where, where the incident happened, what type of incident is, if any field photograph is there, okay? If any some action is taken, that type of information you can do, then incident reporting and incident approval. So once the incident approval, then uh, action can start, okay? Then the decision tools, what we developed in National Database Emergency uh, Platform is, uh, management platform is so um, proximity analysis. If there is a disaster, okay, then a select a particular village which is under flood. And uh, at, uh, I'm giving five kilometer zone here. In five kilometer zone, what are the facilities, hospitals, relief centers, rescue centers, etc.? Okay, so that information you will get. And uh, <coughs> details of those uh, uh, information, okay, if it is a hospital. What type of hospital, how many beds are there, uh, what is the specialization, what other facilities, etc. Root analysis. Is, Thirty seconds, sir. Root analysis, um, nearest proximity route, and uh, evacuation, evacuation plan. Okay, for a particular village under flood, how to evacuate those people? Uh, different places. Okay, and idea and uh, data. This is a geo referred. Means what are the facilities available? This is the end slide. How we are disseminating. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much. That was. Very, very interesting and only reinforces the fact that uh, the NRSC is the leading organization as far as mapping technologies are concerned with GIS uh, at your disposal these days. Damage assessment, very, very important and subsequently the response. Uh, after all, you can't, st if you don't have this data, if you don't have damage assessment, your response can go completely awkward where you, your resources will probably be going, going to the wrong places where there is much less damage compared to others. Right. So thank you. I mean, this only reinforces how the importance of the, the whole issue of data science as far as NRSC is concerned. If you have not been to NRSC, I strongly recommend if you are a part of the disaster management family of India, then you need to go there.
You need to go there, sit down with them for some time, take a little brief, take a brief from a scientist. It's an, it's an eye-opener, absolutely. Thank you very much, Dr. Durgao. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, may I now request uh, Dr. Vinay Thakur, who is the additional director general of the Bhaskacharya National Institute of Space Applications and Geoinformatics, he is directly the, involved with the subject. He also holds the charge, very interestingly, of the managing director of the National Informatics Center Services Incorporated, that is the NICSCI. I request you to tell us a little bit about this organization which you head also. Thank you very much. Fifteen minutes for you, sir. Yes, sir. It's on? Yeah. Yeah. So, dignitaries, uh, honorable chairperson, other panelists, DG and DRF. You have to speak a little loudly. Yeah. Other senior officers of NDRF, officers from state government, central government, a very good afternoon. As uh, you could see from the presentation of Dr. Rao, that technology can play a great role in disaster management. I will be covering some details how capacity building requirements can be enforced, can be enhanced, can be used uh, uh, using technology. Capacity building definitely includes uh, the training activities, even establishment of certain institutions, information and coordination, uh, sharing as well as sharing of data, and then uh, seeing to it that we have an interactive partnership among all the stakeholders. We also need to see that uh, these are not one-time efforts. There is a sustainability of the initiative, how we can build more and more human resource because that is very core to the effective uh, disaster management. Also, we have to see that how we can understand and analyze the local issues, including physical and environment aspect, how we can build the capacities of local and young people, ensure their participation in the entire process of disaster management, whether it is planning, preparedness, or rescue. And uh, uh, not only in this sector, but for all the sectors, capacity building and technology uh, is very, very prime and is very, very important. So while, uh, uh, so what is the target group? Uh, what all, how many people are to be trained? What type of awareness is to be created? So uh, uh, coming to that awareness has to be created around this particular important aspect uh, is that public needs to be uh, made aware of this. So we can, uh, through technology, uh, through information technology or some other technology, uh, related technologies, we can probably create awareness among a uh, lot of people, around crores of them. We can also uh, look into the aspect how disaster management officers can be trained. They could be in thousands or probably in lakhs also. And then how the volunteers uh, could be uh, inserted or included as part of this entire exercise. We have one uh, uh, portal also. I think we may also have a few uh, systems around that. One uh, portal which we made in Ministry of Electronics and IT was DG Saver, where volunteers can uh, enroll themselves. Then we have the databases for uh, NCC and some other uh, similar type of organization. So they can also be put in use and then uh, uh, this entire exercise will be very, very important for disaster risk reduction and disaster management. So what are the modes of uh, capacity building? So starting from television to web technologies and social media, learning management system and knowledge management system. So here uh, there is a requirement where we can create a, uh, audio visual content, animated content, simulated systems. So I'll come to each uh, uh, of them uh, in little details. And the geospatial technologies and platform which Dr. Rao and NRSC has been working. But then my institute, Bhaskacharya Institute, we also work extensively on the role, on the uses of uh, uh, geospatial technology. We are doing PM Gati Shakti project uh, where we are ensuring that there is a single platform and all the infrastructure ministry, they come and ensure an integrated cloud planning and coordinated implementation of infrastructure projects. So uh, uh, extensive use of geospatial technology, the capacities 
around them is very, very important, which uh, uh, I'll give a few more details. And use of latest technologies, this is very, very handy and probably we have to see, uh, not only in disaster, but in other aspects also, other uh, uh, e-governance type of applications, citizen-centric applications, we have to see that how we can refine them better, we can make them better, and how artificial intelligence, virtual reality-based solutions can be uh, put in use. Uh, for doing all this, we have in my institute, uh, which is Bazag N at Gandhi Nagar, we have the facilities, systems, and expertise available for doing uh, all of this. And uh, I'll cover how we are doing. Uh, we are right now running uh, 51 TV channels along with Doodarshan. Uh, which which are uh, around 16 channels are work, working as part of One Day Gujarat uh, for for the education system in uh, the state of Gujarat, and then around 34 channels are being run by us for Swayam Prabha under Ministry of Education, and one channel is uh, running for DG Shala for digital payment uh, for Ministry of Electronics and IT. And in last budget announcement uh, uh, by Honorable Finance Minister. Uh, uh, it was announced that 200 more channels will be set up as part of e-vidya. So uh, in case there is a requirement related to disaster also, probably uh, one or two uh, channels can be started in order to disseminate, in order to uh, do the awareness around uh, disaster management programs. So for Gujarat uh, uh, Disaster Management Authority and Gujarat Institute uh, of Disaster Management, they are running so many TV programs. Uh, they are not only available on TV, but also available on YouTube uh, and other uh, internet mediums. So the training programs right now, these are all available with us in Gujarati, but then they can be translated and made available in any other language, uh, starting from orientation program for traffic police for on uh, heat, wave separateness, then uh, healthcare uh, related for children during and post disaster. So many of these training programs are running through uh, the channels which are running as part of Vande Gujarat. These are many more programs, early warning systems uh, in Gujarat, dignified management of debts, awareness programs. So multiple programs are being done on TV, and this is available on Dish TV and uh, 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 as part of Doodarshan Amarila uh, TV programs. Uh, uh, as far as so uh, the use of uh, 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 use of TV, uh, as I was uh, speaking of. Uh, can be ensured uh, for NDRF as well as we are also working. Uh, uh, there is a channel for BSF where uh, their outposts, their far flung officials deputed there are, are being trained on various mechanisms, on administrative uh, procedures, and other uh, related details by BSF. So, similar probably uh, programs or uh, TV channels can be established and run for as part of disaster management also. Uh, coming uh, to the use of uh, uh, GIS technologies, definitely a lot of technologies are being done, models are being done by, uh, uh, by NRSC. Uh, but then we can uh, offer at our place, uh, we, have, we have a big space in Gandhi Nagar, so we have office in Delhi also, so uh, together probably uh, we can build any capacity building program uh, related to NDRF. Uh, whether it is on geospatial technologies, because as I was talking, we are working on seeing that geospatial technologies are put in governance use, put in uh, use so that we can have a better decision making. And then it is not only that we are developing these programs, we are also building the capacities of the people who are involved and then using these programs. So this uh, small uh, uh, application of geospatial technology that uh, how sulfur dioxide leakage uh, uh, can be uh, traced. And uh, then since we have, we have the data for entire country up to habitation level, uh, starting from state to district boundaries to taluka boundaries to block level boundaries, uh, to ground and child boundaries, to assembly constituency boundaries, to post offices boundaries, to police station boundaries, uh, to villages and ha habitation, this entire database is available with us. 
Uh, so you can overlay uh, uh, the spread of uh, any of these disasters and see to it that what action uh, can be initiated uh, on this. So on the, on, the, on the map itself, on this technology, we can ensure this. Uh, this is another application of uh, uh, how the flood um, uh, uh, rescue and other operations can be, or mitigations can be uh, done. You can see that uh, if there is a spread of uh, flood around that area, so how we can, what are the area which should be made ready to evacuate, what should be the areas where we have to do immediate evacuations. So not only the building model around that, which definitely can be done by NRSC or can be done by Bazaar, but then training around them, uh, modeling them, and uh, one more thing that uh, the, all the solutions being done at my institute, they are in-house, they are on open source. We are not buying any other technologies from any other place, so they are all being done in-house. And they are being done as per the requirements of the user department. So in case they require something else, so we, we build those models and then uh, ensure that they are provided to them. So this is where, so that one, that these are the area which require uh, to be uh, immediately uh, uh, evacuated. And so similar type of models uh, probably can be worked out. Then we have a third one. And then uh, we have a cyclone also uh, uh, based on the parameters given to us, uh, which are customized. Uh, based on your requirement, we can within seconds or uh, at the earliest these type of models can be generated and then can be put in use uh, by, uh, uh, by, by your department. Uh, coming to the use of, I don't know, uh, probably the phone size is a little less. You have two minutes. Yeah, yes, I'll try to finish this. So social media is very, very important. We have the guideline around social media also from my, my ministry. Uh, so social media uh, information and instruction in providing them in real time basis, the warning and alerts. Uh, last year we had, uh, last and last years we had Amanath Yatra app. Uh, a mobile app uh, developed by us, uh, which was being used by the people who were visiting Amanath Yatra in order to send them the alert, in order to send them the warning and other systems. Because disasters definitely are very, very complex and then you have to attend to them at the earliest. So uh, uh, other than using uh, the, the social media, I think this is going to be very, very fast uh, medium for this. The mobile penetration around, we have 140 crore people, may not be a unique number, but then out of which 82 crores are smartphones. So we have to see that how we can uh, extend the use of smartphones uh, for creating awareness, for creating, uh, uh, for even building the capacities around that. And uh, also we have to see that uh, what type of, when and what to inform, how to share data, information, what are the core activities, how to use web, where to use web and mobile apps, how to reach all the stakeholders, what type of programs are to be made around them. Uh, what type of requirements of women are to be built in, what type of disability requirements, so they all can be built using the systems uh, which uh, can be done uh, using technologies. So AI, which I was talking of, is very, very important. You know, we can have the model because data is very, very important and we have now data uh, available with us for many, many years. So that data can be used to see that we are able to forecast we are able to develop the maps, heat maps, build decision support systems. We can do sentimental analysis of, of the data coming on social media platform using AI tools. That is very, very important. Also to see that uh, we get the correct information, we get the correct location details. We are able to do the predictive analysis and models around that, uh, around them. How we can manage the distress calls that can also be uh, uh, enabled through an AI-based system. Voice assistance can be used for this. We can also see that where we can use robot sensors, drones, and models around them for collecting data and disseminating the information. And definitely working out the training material, AR and VR, virtual reality based, because that is that that capture 
captures the uh, attention of the participants to a great extent because he has to see through that we are gadget only. So that is very, very crucial that we use these tools uh, for uh, building the capacity, building content. And, uh, yeah, so last. so last one is the knowledge management system. I think uh, in my previous organization, we have one knowledge management system, kms.gov.in. Uh, I think uh, there was some discussion also with the uh, NDMA and so this tool can also be put in use where your officials can, uh, can participate, upload data, disseminate that, share among each other and then uh, this is very important medium to scale it up cut the cost of traveling, reaching the experts and everything around that, and then building uh, better audio and video content. Uh, Bhaskarachar Institute, I have already told that we have around 600 layers, GIS layers, and we do provide uh, uh, the platform and the framework for GIS technologies, uh, which is 2D, 3D, 4D data, because we are also maintaining time series data. And we provide the facilities in seamless manner uh, in order that the resource ownership stays with the department and we provide the technology, we provide the capacity building requirements to them as per, as per uh, their requirements of particular event. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, Dr. Vinay Thakur, that was in a short time frame, a lot of information, in particular interest, this aspect of knowledge management at the end, earlier brought out with the aspect of uh, the 51 television channels, which are spewing out virtually knowledge everywhere, and the fact that it's also on YouTube, so it can be repetitive from time to time. Social media, uh, you can't wish it away. Social media is developing as one of the most effective tools for communications today and the aspect of prediction analysis, very interestingly sentiment and analysis which you have also brought out. Thank you for making us aware of all this. May I now request our last speaker, Dr. Manoj Rajan, who is the Commissioner of the uh, Karnataka State Disaster Management Authority, is going to speak on enhancing state preparedness in disaster through new technologies. Very, very experienced. He's a, IFS officer from the 99 batch, presently holding a lot of designations, Special Secretary of Food Processing, Agriculture Department, Government of Karnataka, Commissioner of the KSDMA, Revenue Department, Government of Karnataka, and uh, the Director, Revenue Department, and Managing Director of the CEO, Rashtra E-Market Services, and SPV of the Government of Karnataka. Um, I heard of him, particularly when his conducted a wonderful mock exercise in the recent past at Mangalore, putting together all the possible potential uh, hazards and threats in the, in the, in the industrial area of, of uh, Mangalore. Uh, thank you. I think uh, we can have a lot of learning from you. Thank you, sir. With the Chair's permission, and uh, I would want to thank uh, DG Indiara for inviting me for this uh, a wonderful uh, gathering and giving permission to speak. So, as you rightly said, sir, uh, we just heard two speakers speaking on geospatial technology, especially Durga Rao, started from the satellite and then the next speaker on capacity building. Now, I will talk from the practitioner's point of view, how we have adopted in Karnataka. We will try to uh, show certain things, uh, uh, how technology has been adapted. So with the theme of uh, today's uh, session, technology applications in disaster management, I thought that a platform alone wouldn't do. So I thought I will give a complete holistic uh, vision on what a structure, what a uh, uh, design support mechanisms are required for a state to perform its duties in disaster management. I will be speaking on these four buckets. I will be talking about the exclusive disaster monitoring system in Karnataka and a little bit on the early warning system which we have. And the third one is the most important one where I will talk about two innovative practices where we have adopted geospatial technology and lastly, if time permits, on the policy planning related stuff. So on the screen, in rough, uh, because many D uh, DM practitioners are there, uh, Karnataka, if you look at the KSDMA structure, we are happy to say that we have an exclusive organization, exclusively helping, giving science-based inputs to disaster management in Karnataka. And if you look at the disaster management plans, we have got all our disaster management plans at the district level, at the state level, 19 departments all have their annual disaster management plans uploaded. We are also one unique state where around 2,187 
gramo panchayats have done their hazard risk vulnerable analysis prepared their templates prepared their dm plans at the gramo panchayat level then if you look at the rescue and response mechanism we have a very very cordial relationship with three major agencies be it the district disaster management authorities the sdrf and the ndrf in tandem they they perform they excel in delivering services which is very crucial at the time of disaster and if you look at the the uh, next one that is on relief out over here again sir we are happy to say that uh, uh, we we follow the complete aadhar enabled payment systems for relief dispersal in fact 20 lakh farmers last year for the floods in less than one month's time directly into their bank accounts so i am trying to say that all these areas technology has been adopted the latest of technology be it your deduplication be it your aadhar enabled system or your geo location geo authentication of a particular person we have adopted technology sir apart from this the the, the state of karnataka has got exclusive mous with seven to eight national institutions such as we study we learn and we perform together similarly if you look at the the next one i will show in detail sir that what are the disaster monitoring systems in karnataka and then i will also go in, in in detail sir so with this little backdrop the disaster monitoring system in karnataka a unique state where we have got around 6 and a half thousand telemetric rain gauges which is at the gram panchayat level which captures rainfall at every 15 minutes interval 96 times a day gives me rainfall related information not only volume but also the intensity we have telemetric weather the stations at the gram panchayat uh, at the hobli level which captures wind speed then your wind direction it uh, captures your uh, uh, humidity and temperature we have seismic observatories we have lightning and thunderstorm sensors so each of this i'll just brush through sir on the screen left hand side each black dot is a telemetric rain gauge and on the right hand side each red dot is a telemetric weather stations so as i said remotely these uh, 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 sensors perform their job and send data to us at 15 minutes interval similarly if you see sir the data which comes up here is collected in a very seamless manner onto a geospatial uh, uh, database and every day at 8:30 in the morning on the global website we have our rainfall we have our weather we have all the important parameters generated we have automated the last 50 years precipitation index compare it to it to how much of deviation from normal on a daily basis weekly basis monthly seasonal basis it can be for the state disaster for the state district or taluk level so this is where we stand uh, a step ahead of using technology so like this we have very periodic reports in fact if you see on the screen you can see that the the weather the, the rainfall is so erratic that it is concentrated at the southwest monsoon 74%. Again if you look at the map from the left hand side the coastal side you get 4500 mm of rainfall to 400 mm of rainfall. So such is the, uh, the diversity of Karnataka rainfall variability in Karnataka 10 agro climatic zones. So this information is very very critical for the agricultural practitioners to get information. I will come to that also sir. So on a daily basis sir we look into what is a 50 years norm what is this year's actual rainfall and how much we have deviated which region has deviated which district which taluk and then we jump in to go in for uh, policy related uh, uh, support similarly if you look at the various kinds of uh, maps we generate minimum maximum temperature um, uh, then the relative humidity sir karnataka is one state that in the last 10 years we have not seen a single death due to heat waves sir though the neighboring states uh, have have reported out over here due to such kind of science based inputs we have very good practices at our at our state level offices are closed no hard work no open work in the open sun areas in particular areas on the heat wave days so this is where we say that we have adopted technology at the maximum level to see how we can we can look at managing a disasters better so drought assessment also if you look at rainfall data we have we have the dry spells the the standard precipitation index and we look into mandatory indicators and we can in fact we have supported how the drought assessment should happen for the for the country sir we have got lightning sensors in karnataka i'm happy to say that 25 minutes prior to a lightning strike that is a ground ground to cloud strike the cloud to ground strike we are in a position at ksn dmc to inform our public saying that in particular area there is going to be a lightning so we can create awareness sir i will talk about how we are communicating this in my coming slides sir similarly seismic sensors we have put in place 
In fact, our early warning system is very noteworthy, sir. So this is for global access. We have got it for the whole state. We have got it for Bangalore. We got it for three smart cities. So five such websites we run, sir. Every 15 minutes, it, there's an update. You have snippets. You have the rainfall for today, tomorrow, forecast for the next three days. Completely on, on an auto, auto mode, this information is given out over here. So this is one thing where technology has been adopted, where we have used artificial intelligence and machine learning here. Here, if you see the farmer, uh, farmer uh, uh, on, the on, on the there, he looks at the cloud. But here in Karnataka, he makes a phone call to us, sir. So here are two, three points I want to tell all the practitioners that this is not a toll-free number. He has to pay that whatever phone call because he knows if he's going to make a call, he's going to use that information. And all his livelihood-related questions, sir, 19 lakh phone calls I have received in a small call center of 36 people running the call center. So how is it possible? This was possible just by complete computerization, artificial intelligence. So once a farmer calls, and particularly as soon as the call is there, we pick up the call, uh, my system pulls out the information pertinent to that grama panchayat, whether it is going to rain, whether it is foggy, dry days, windy. So he asks, should I irrigate, should I fertigate, should I cut, should I harvest? All such livelihood questions we answer, sir. It, in fact, uh, we have done a uh, third party assessment where one farmer spreads message to an average eight to nine people. So that way the entire state of Karnataka, we communicate such critical information to the people. In fact, we, we help them plan their farming operations much better. This is the disaster early warning system, sir, a very cheap solution, but very effective solution, sir. We went on the concept of drum beating. So on top of the Grama Panchayat, sir, you can see that on top of the Grama Panchayat, I put a public address system. As I said, my sensors can sense 20 minutes, 25 minutes prior the lightning. If it is in that particular Grama Panchayat sitting at from my place, I will put a public announcement asking the people not to come out during lightning, not to do this. If they are in the field, what to do, what not to do. Crouch yourself, close your ears. So such kind of do's and don'ts, starting from lightning to heavy rainfall to heavy water releases, heat waves, say it, sir, multi-hazard, multilingual, pre-recorded messages, whatever language you want, whatever is recorded will be played out in a public address system, radius of one to one and a half kilometer. Then there's a discussion among, oh, what was that siren? So this is what we have adopted, sir. It costs me around 85,000 to 90,000 rupees per gram of panchayat, sir. This is the cost wherein we have established this centralized public address system. We adopted technology in monitoring the inter uh, dam releases, reservoir releases so we capture the rainfall we know what is the forecast how much water from the watershed is going to come into our reservoir what should be the releases what is the carrying capacity so entire thing is now sensor controlled as I said, three smart cities we have gone in for, for uh, uh, these things, sir. So these are one set of information, sir. This is for urban flooding, wherein you see the storm water drains, how much water stand, and where it, where it goes, sir. I'll come to the critical part of my presentation, wherein we have started these three new innovative things, sir. One is the Geospatial Enabled Disaster Management Plan. So, sir, uh, we heard about GI, geospatial technology, combination of GIS, RS, and global positioning system. So complicated. But it is one thing which has penetrated into rural area much more than how much IT, IT took. IT took many years to penetrate. But this is where our people are comfortable. So saying so, sir, if you look at geospatial capabilities, on the left-hand side, we have addressed everything. We have used what is the location, what condition, what are the trends, patterns. We are now using the right-hand side. We are saying, how can we use geospatial intelligence how can we use geospatial authentication analytics in our disaster management which i will show you what this product is all about sir this is just to show you sir uh, how which area is flooded in the last 15 years how many times so on and so forth which our earlier speaker said so this is one way of using geospatial technology to see which intensity where i need to focus but here sir in in in, in this part of my presentation we have tried to adopt it for all the three scenarios pre disasters how we can use it during disaster how you can use it and post disaster sir but i don't know whether i have an uh, internet connection otherwise i have shown shown the portal live but i'll try to explain sir so the disaster management plan in the entire country is a paper-based document, sir. It doesn't speak to each other. Huh? Live can sakta hai na? Okay, I'll come up there then. So thank you. Uh, so the geospatial DDMP, sir, this is what I wanted uh, uh, the Lieutenant General staff to please see that we can roll it out in the entire country. Today the DM plan is a paper-based document. It cannot speak to you. You open a DM document, though NDM has given guidelines for a disaster management plan, you make a phone call to the inspector, he says, sir, I'm transferred two years back or two months back. 
the health health officer will say the same thing so the system has a paper based document has limited access yearly once also if you publish it cannot talk to you it cannot communicate it cannot it cannot do complex analysis to you addressing these problems sir we have went into this geo special ddmp where we put in the information sir we have this technology platform which receives which collects the information stores it analyzes communicates to you which also says what you will have to do gives you decision support systems along with authenticated information sir this is what we want to move into sir so over here if you see sir the the objectives of jetm is precisely to manage disasters in a much more formal manner optimum utilization of resources capture past lessons if you ask anybody what happened last disaster he wouldn't be there sir so taking all this into consideration we have made this strategy sir that every resource if i ask this uh, august gathering what are the resources and resource persons for handling disaster i may get some 25 30 list of items sir but there are more than 250 items are starting from a rope to a snake catcher to a jcb to an ngo to a nurse to an ncc cadet there are n number of people sir who can be used during disaster so the attempt is to in peace time capture all resources and resource persons and geo stamp them to a location to a village sir so a village should tell what are the resources available available in my village sir it should be it can be a resource it can be a resource person if i'm talking about a police officer in day time he is in his office night time he is at his residence place so such is how the system should be talking if a disaster happens at a location it should talk about who is staying at that point of time whose resources i can marshal immediately to salvage the situation so this is the first strategy we said that we geo position all resources we capture experiences durga rao said if something path has to go up over here last time there was a big blockade you couldn't go there the system will say last time it happened you'll have to take a boat and go that side so such kind of experiences will be captured a building database is a continuous effort so every 3 months once the district head officer sitting in his office can authenticate these are the transfer these are the new building these are the new vehicles these are the things every 3 months once the database can be uh, uh, built and built upon sir a minute more one minute one minute theek hai sir so then i'll i'll skip the uh, so give us give us a brief demo give us a brief But I was given 25 minutes time, sir. You are giving me 15 minutes. 25 minutes time, dear. That's 25 minutes for me, sir. Yeah, 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 yeah. I can see from here. Is it coming? Yeah. Yes. Can I come there and see? So it takes just 40 seconds for you to download the DDMP. But the most important one is this one, sir. Resource filter based on events. So what if, what I have done is we have created some 64 templates, and in 64 templates we have captured all the resources in the district. Now, for example, if there is a flood here, sir, I choose flood here, and then I choose a location. The map map has to come. I I click a location here. For example, I'm clicking a location here and saying, give me all the resources in. Five kilometers of this point where flood is uh, happened, or I can say earthquake, I can say cyclone, I can choose it. Now you see on the screen down, sir, I have got all the resources here. 
rescue material, factory details, fire stations, everything is available here. On click of a button, I can use these resources. Now you see, sir, personal are 869 people are available for me at this point of time, at the place where I said flood is happening. And here I get complete details of the person, whether what is he, whether he handled uh, disaster in the past, his contact number, everything is there. It is shown on the map and, and, and those details. Similarly, if I'm going to talk on uh, relief, this relief, relief uh, related items, which are the buildings which I can use for relief camps, what is the space, how many toilets are there, what is the capacity of these relief centers. So such information is available at click of a button. So if I am the deputy commissioner here, I go and ask anybody, I get only little information because everybody are getting transferred. But this information is a complete strong database for me, for which I can take a more structured response out there. So I can choose people, I can communicate with that group of people, I can call for those res uh, uh, resources completely, a entire item is available there. Sir. So this is a continuous database which has been built upon wherein not only the disaster management plan is more structured having the same flow for the state but also it talks to me during disaster helping the disaster manager handle a disaster in a much more better manner. Yeah. So similarly sir, we can go to the PPT now. So sir, the, you see sir, four, four uh, districts sir, 66,000 uh, data sets of information we have got, got it sir. So the formats are much detailed. If I'm talking about a hospital, I'm talking about what are the specialties in the hospital, what facility, oxygen, ventilator, ICU, entire thing. Around 60 column information I collect sir for hospital. Ambulance also I capture. So this is the beauty is that all granular details are collected in peace time and in war time it is made useful. So this is the mobile authentication when an information is given given by the district health officer, it goes... Thank you, sir. <coughs> yes, sir. Thank you. That was uh, delightful. Very good uh, culmination of this whole session in the sense two outstanding presentations earlier and a third one now. And I particularly liked what, uh, Sahib, what you, you mentioned in the middle of whether to slip off the tongue, you said in peace time. In peace time this can happen. I'm glad that you are relating between peace time and war. Because for me, disaster management is war, right? If that is what everyone in the disaster management community should be thinking, that in peace time I can do this, 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 but in war, that is the time when the disaster strikes, this is what I will respond with. And my uh, brief experience in life tells me, any organization which sets up an EOC, an emergency operation center kind of a institution, the data wall, your data all embedded there, the right decision makers operating around there. You know, it, uh, it puts the whole thing together. Otherwise, what happens is this data may all be available anywhere else, but unless it is put together in a, in a presentable state, in the middle of the chief minister may walk in and uh, at a moment's notice, you should be able to present him everything so that he can take his decisions. That is what a decision support system is supposed to be, right? So uh, uh, there are lots of states who have done tremendous work on this. There are lots of others who are catching up and getting into it. I hope that this kind of a seminar will uh, initiate and trigger in your minds the necessity that Next couple of years, without technology, without this kind of a management, you will be found wanting but as far as disasters are concerned. Having said that, uh, we still got a little time available. At the end, I will request the DG NDRF to make a brief intervention for a minute or two minutes because he has not spoken to us. And, he, and this is his event. He came in the morning. He had to arrive for different reasons. He came a little late. He will make a few remarks, but before that I have time for two or three maybe questions. If someone would like to comment or just... Sir, uh, sir I have... Like, yes, please. please. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, I have one uh, question to Dr. Manoj. This is regarding, that's a very good software which Karnataka government is using right now regarding that resource and how you manage. So one of the few things that how periodic you are uh, updating the data. For example, there's a field of food. So food is not only the government data, it is private sector who is having. So what is the source of data? Certain fields which are not very technical and how periodic is the data? 
because uh, in other resource mapping also the main problem is district district is not able to periodically update the data and that is the major gap actually across the country so and secondly nrsc is al already having so much of production and software a uh, lot of uh, interesting inputs from nrsc are you using that also regarding this forecasting thing and all or it is only the state data you are using right now thank you Thank you for the question. In fact, uh, the data which I said it consists of metadata as well as dynamic data. So the metadata is starting from census information, village, population, and all those things which, which you put up there. The officer-related data is also there, right? Then there is private data, like a private building is there, a private nursing home is there, and so on and so forth. So the 64 templates which have been divided, each of the department gets an average of seven to eight templates out over here. Once at the district level, this metadata is being pumped in, the village accountant or the revenue inspector authenticates it using the mobile phone, saying that yes, here, here is a nursing home and here are the features, whatever has been mentioned there, it is available. So this is the first level of geo-authentication which happens. Then I said every three months once, each of the head of the departments will have to do a value, uh, update of the data which is going to collect over here. This is as far as the entire information collection of resources, resource persons, SOPs, checklist which are built in place. Then comes another layer of citizens which is going to be putting it over here. This is exclusively on damages and relief. As and when it comes, they will upload the information onto that. Second part of your question was uh, how much of data we take from others, yes. Now, if you look at uh, seven MOUs which I have, in fact, the daily information, the forecast information, in fact, we are the only state where our information through FTP goes to SAC Ahmedabad, and from SAC Ahmedabad, we get it on a daily basis. So 12-hour for forecast for next six weeks, that is three days information, is available on a daily basis from SAC Ahmedabad. So long-term, now-cast information, we get it from all the IMD, SHAR, and so on and so forth, and inbuilt it into the system. Thank you. Uh, obviously, you are, and uh, rather you have the manpower resources, you have trained your personnel. I don't know how your continuity is being maintained as a part of the administration because, for example, the IRDN portal that we have, which we try and populate, you know, all the states are populating it, we find it very difficult to motivate people to be able to put it across. We are all the time trying to spread this information. Please, from wherever you are, whatever information you have on resources, please try and populate the IRDN portal. So how, how do you ensure this within your state? If you permit me to be hard, sir, I said, that's what in the tea break, I said, you'll have to be working like another election commission of India. The NDMA should work like that. Then the writ runs through, sir. Everybody will pull the information. Sorry to say that, sir. But yes, the IDR and information per se is just a static piece of information saying how many ropes, how many ladders I have. If you look at my information, it says where that rope is, whom I can get that rope from, who is the contact mobile person for the JCP, mobile number. So it is a little more in, in uh, this one, sir. And it is novel, so I'm pushing it through in the state, sir. It will take me around three months to get a district, so I plan to complete Karnataka by this uh, financial year, sir, by the by end of uh, uh, 2023, sir. Thank you. Uh, any other question? Yes, sir. <coughs> yes. Uh, for the benefit of other panelists, I am Avhas Kumar. I am 1990 batch IPS. I am heading fire services in uh, Tamil Nadu. Uh, my question is to Dr. Durga Rao. Um, you showed uh, geo mapping of the flood plains of uh, Andhra. I think you must be having data on Kaveri and other rivers also. Uh, for example, Adyar also. Adyar caused major flood in Ch at Chennai during uh, 2015. But that time, government was not having any uh, such data available with them. So, are you sharing data with the state governments, and what is the mechanism to share the data? Yes, sir. See, uh, whenever there's a flood in Tamil Nadu, okay, like uh, other states, we do map and uh, disseminate uh, through emails generally, immediately, and uh, at the same time, we disseminate through our NDM portal and the Bowen portal also. Main portal is NDM portal, and we send through email also to the concerned state DMS organizations. Okay. Another thing is the, the, for Tamil Nadu also, during the last 20 years, whatever is the flood affected as observed by satellite data, that is also mapped and given to Tamil Nadu government. Okay, and uh, thank you. And one more uh, one last question to Dr. Binan Thakur. Uh, it was interesting to know that you are having 4D data. Is it for buildings also? And all the, uh, any tall buildings are coming in your data? 
No buildings data is not available, sir. We have a cadastral data and we have a other uh, uh, DEMs created for entire country, but building data is not there. Sir. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, is there someone there? Yeah, please go ahead. Why don't you come forward? Right, sir. Uh, good afternoon, honorable sirs. So we have seen we are uh, making a tremendous improvement in the uh, response to the disasters. Now, uh, what I want to say is can we do something to improve the behavior of the responder also, sir? Can we introduce it as a uh, into, into, uh, behavior of the sufferer, sir? The one who is suffering from the disaster, can we make him aware? Can we introduce small drills to train him in the schools? Uh, can we make it as a subject so that when the disaster comes, his response is also uh, integrated into the response of the responder? Because the human brain is a very uh, talented brain. If we train it and we, uh, if we inform it, we can respond in a better way when he's a sufferer also. Wonderful question. In fact, uh, that is a way forward. In fact, uh, if you look at the concept of Abdha Mitra also lays on this, that community as first responders. If you look at Karnataka model 2147 Grama Panchayats, this is basically what we are trying to do, that we teach them minimal support systems on what is disaster, what to do, what not to do. But it's a long journey, but at least thinking about it is a wonderful thing. We must be looking at, because I cannot rush to all places all times, but some a small support there at the right time may save uh, the life there. So teaching the responders what they'll have to do, both uh, as a community, as an individual, and you gave a solution also. In schools, it can be one basic thing where you can start uh, putting such kind of do's and don'ts. For example, lighting, you can't do anything. Lighting, only IEC is the solution. What to do, what not to do. So these are very good uh, solutions. Sir, we are attempting on that, sir, and we are looking forward on uh, working with community on these things. Sir, thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. I think we've run out of time, but uh, that was a very good question. And the, the human uh, aspect related to disaster management has always got to be kept in mind. The aspect of personnel management, human resource management, and knowledge management concerning human beings. Um, uh, I think this was a brilliant session, absolutely. One of the finest sessions I have attended for a very long time. And thank you for setting up such a subject, because it's not often that you talk about technologies. You know, you talk about procedures and this and that, but technologies don't really enter into it. Thank you very much once again. May I request uh, DG NDRF now to make his remarks. Thank you, General Hassan. Uh, illustrious panelists, illustrious speakers whom I missed out on. My apologies for missing the first session. Uh, I'm very glad actually to see the all of you here. I extend a warm welcome to this one day workshop. And uh, I'm very actually impressed by the quality of presentations that General Hasnan just mentioned. You have made a fantastically ballistic presentation, Dr. Manoj. It's great to hear you. And uh, your enthusiasm, your passion for it actually came through in the way you spoke. So I'm sure that this will press a trigger off for other state uh, responders who are all present here to get in touch with them. I would request you, if you've not documented, please document this and circulate this as a study. NDRF doesn't lay claim to being uh, the, the guru in every aspect of our functioning. We would love to learn from you. And I'm sure I have picked up so many cues from Dr. Manoj's presentation today. And we'll take it forward with them. Now. Uh, Turkey experience is very recent in our memory. Our teams have just started coming back. The first one came back today. Uh, we are not no better shape than they are to deal with such a situation. And the teams which have been there, the kind of experience they share, a lot of gaps were seen uh, in the in the information, in the in the communication. We couldn't get in touch with them. Coverage was poor. Uh, in the situational awareness, in the operational planning in the multiple teams which came from all over the world and how to coordinate with them, how to allocate them their areas of work, the basic facilities of transportation which a team needs to reach, the place of work site, all those things they were struggling with. And I'm very sure that if it hits us with that kind of a ferocity, we would be maybe in worse shape. Our population density is much more, and some of the places which are in zone five are heavily overbuilt, overdeveloped in an unplanned manner. And let me tell you, uh, for the first few hours, we could not get a live victim out. But the first six-year-old girl, Beren, we got out, it was heartwarming. So in this entire work, we saved two lives. NDRF directly saved two lives of two girls, six and eight years old. And that itself is worth all the effort that went into it to reach there and do all that we could do. 
So my uh, first thing is, let's be very, very sensitive to what we have been saddled with. The citizens look upon us to save them in this kind of crisis. And if we haven't done our homework in times of peace, as it's been called, then we would be failing somewhere. So take it really seriously. Second thing is the technology thing. We feel that a lot of work is being done in bits and pieces. For example, BISEC is doing something. NRSC is doing something which overlaps but extends. And a lot of states are doing wonderful stuff. I'm sure your organizations also are making effort and creating some innovations. This kind of a platform tries to put those pieces together to show us what the other is doing and maybe learn from them. I'll request NDMA, since General Hasnan is here, to start tracking these kind of innovations and these kind of developments so that the entire thing fits somewhere rather than each of us reinventing the wheel. Uh, social media is a challenge. It is also an opportunity. Uh, whatever we do gets exposed there. Whatever we do or don't do gets exposed for good or bad. So we have to be now much more accountable than what we used to be. And we can use this as an opportunity for educating. <laughs> the last question I want to mention, the officer was very, was very, very uh, good question he mentioned because in spite of all the strength that we might bring into NDRF and SDRFs and Abdam Mitras and civil defense, still the person at the receiving end of the disaster would be the first responder. The person in the house whose house starts shaking should know what to do. So what we have done is CBSC's school syllabus has disaster response part of its syllabus. I'll request all of you to look at your state boards and see if you can incorporate that. Maybe in the non-sensitive classes like 7, 8, 9, and then maybe 11th. So board is not burdened with it. We do school safety programs. We do community outreach. But the response from the state SDRFs and local police stations is not very enthusiastic. So when you go back, please associate with us. When we go to a school from NDRF, let the local SHO come, a couple of constables who can then have a rapport with the school, and they take it forward with the drills that they need to do. E-content is one such initiative for the NSS volunteers, which are 40 lakh in number. We are starting to make e-content so that anybody and everybody can log on and they can understand what they need to do in this kind of a situation for their own and their family's safety. So these kind of innovations, they need to be on some place where everybody can read and they can learn. Technology can be a huge force multiplier. And climate change is bringing more and more things on our plate. And down the line, challenges will be more, more drastic and more more damaging. So my request to all of you, you need to get into it with a lot of passion like Dr. Manoj displayed here and do something for the people of this country who expect it from us. Thank you very much. Thank you. That brings us to the end of the session. And I think now the lunch break is on. Uh, just a minute, sir. Uh, thank you, sir, for the encouraging words. And uh, thank you, uh, the moderator and the panelists. A very constructive and beautiful application of technology. Definitely uh, an eye opener, I would say, sir. And may I now request uh, DG NDR of Sri Atul Karwal to present mementos to the moderator and the panelists. Uh, first in the series, uh, Lieutenant General Sayyid Atta Hasnain, retired. <laughs> Thank you so much, sir. It's an honor to be you all this. And our today's most enthusiastic and passionate uh, speaker, Dr. Manoj Rajan. Thank you, sir. With this, we come to an end of the second session of today's event. We now break for lunch. And uh, just to remind you, please uh, be here uh, at 2.10, uh, I mean, 14.10 uh, hours. And I would request uh, officers of NDRF and hosts to take the left door and left approach.
dignitaries and uh, all the delegates, you please adopt the right approach. Thank you.